a Church of the Brethren pastor and one of the associate ministers with Disciples Net. I'm also the founder of the Tenderness Tour, an outreach working to end violence in the lives of children and families. Since 1989, you've traveled over 4,000 miles by a wheelchair, raising funds through those tenderness tours. Why do you do them? Uh, the tenderness tour, as you said, started in 1989 with a 41-day, 1,086-mile wheelchair trip around the state of Indiana. When I, when I started the tenderness tour myself, it was very much a part of my own healing process from sexual abuse. and. But I kind of joke that I had a thousand miles worth of anger to work out. And that's one of the reasons that I think that first tour was so successful, because it was pure emotion that kind of kept me going. And, th and there was this part of me that did, did not think I would succeed, you know, that I, I would have this massive failure and I could come back and it would affirm that, you know, the abusive cycle had won. And, and I can honestly say that what happened instead was, you know, I, I had left Indianapolis with $20 in my pocket, a backpack on the wheelchair, and, and only a few plans on how I was actually going to survive those 41 days. And I just experienced act after act after act of kindness, of people stopping and, and donating to the charity that I was raising money for, of offering me places to stay, of food. I could be in the middle of you know nothing but farmland and I would have people stop and give me water, and it was amazing. And by the end of the tour, I really discovered that the message that I had was a message of hope, was a message that we could overcome our past, that we also all need each other. And I also found that it was a message that needed to be heard. And so when I came back from that first tour, I really knew that I needed to get my life together, get my healing together, and then to keep going back out on the road. And so I've been doing that now. The, you know, this, I'm in my 24th year of the Tenderness Tour, and I've wheeled, as you noted, about 4,000 miles, um, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, usually in very grassroots, very small fundraisers, you know, sometimes literally a dollar at a time, donating to children's organizations and meeting with churches and civic groups and schools. How many tenderness tours have there been so far? Has there been one a year? There's always been at least one a year. So uh, I would. there are definitely years where I do more than one. So I, I'm guessing I've probably had about 40 or 50 tours. Some years are slower than others. You know, I do have spina bifida, and so my health can be a little, a little unstable, I guess you would call it. So there are some years where I don't travel as much as others. You know, I'm now getting into my 40s, and so it's you know not as easy to do some of the more extensive events that I've done. My last time doing across the state of Indiana was on the 20th anniversary, which was four years ago. How have you felt about the results of the tour so far? You know, in most ways, I you know obviously I th I think I was this idealistic person when I first started. I think I really truly believed that by the time I would get done with the tour that child abuse would end. You know, I, I was this idealist. And so there's always that disappointment that you look around or, or I'll leave a town that I've just toured in and, you know, two weeks later you're reading in the newspaper about a case where a child has died or an act of domestic violence. And it just breaks your heart because, you know, in my mind I'm thinking, man, if I had only reached that family, maybe I could have done something. But I also know that there are a lot of successes along the way. I know that I've been able to reach out to a lot of people. I speak out to a lot of schools. Um, I, I'm not one of these, you know, high-paid motivational speakers. I go into, you know, schools and I offer my services and I offer my presence and I do that with nonprofits and I, I try to do what I can while I'm in town. And uh, I, so far, it's been successful. I, I think to do so many little events and raise literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're doing something. And, you know, I get, I still get emails about the tour and about the impact that it's had on people. I, you know, I always say to myself, if I do a tour and one person benefits from it, it's worth it.
because I think that that's one of the messages that we need in our society. We we need to tell each other, you know, that you're worth it. You know, one of my rules is whenever I'm on the road, I wheel in all kinds of weather. You know, I don't stop wheeling if it's raining or storming or snowing or whatever because my my whole philosophy is abuse does not end when there's bad weather. So I can't stop trying to end it when there's bad weather. So I think that there have been a lot of successes. I've learned a lot along the way. I think I'm probably better at the outreach and the awareness. And I'm really good at building community. I'm not as good at the fundraising pieces because I don't like asking for money. And a lot of the people that I do outreach with really can't afford it. So I try to never make that the true emphasis, but um, you know, even that area, I would say, has been successful. How much of the money that you've earned in the tenderness tours has ended up in your pocket? <laughs> Zero. Um, One hundred percent of the funds raised for twenty-four years has been donated to nonprofits and or individual efforts. Sometimes. Um, I tend to really have a strong respect for grassroots efforts. So I'll, there are times they don't have the 501c3 because those are a little expensive to get. But uh, it's always gone to organizations or ministries or efforts like that. I don't get paid. I figure I'm blessed enough to have a full-time income plus a ministry income. And so this is a way that I can return that blessing. and. You know, I use my vacation time from work to do these tours, and it really, it's my way of saying thank you. You know, it's my way of acknowledging that, you know, I, uh, I am so blessed. I have lived a wonderful life. I've, I've lived, you know, 20 plus years longer than anybody ever expected me to live. I have a quality of life that is amazingly high for someone with spina bifida. You know, yes, I've been through a lot of challenges, but the blessings so far outweigh the challenges. I, you know, there's no comparisons. There have been a couple of times when we've almost considered making the tour, you know, the 501c3 and put me on salary, and it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. And the one thing I'm really good, even though I'm not a great fundraiser, I'm really good at getting things donated. So if I need something, I get it donated. And so the tours are actually very low cost. What is so special about the Jessica Evans Legacy Center mm -hmm. Tour? And what do you hope to accomplish on this tour? I was on tour last year in Elkhart, Indiana, and one of my volunteers texted me. Her name is Chris, and she was texting me just to kind of stay in touch, and then I started seeing some posts on her page and I realized that her, her daughter had not come home. I kind of caught on, you know, it's hard to catch up on the road. And, and what had happened was that her daughter had gone out camping with her boyfriend over Labor Day weekend and they were both murdered. And, you know, Chris is one of my tenderness to her volunteers. Even living in Illinois now, she, she's stayed in touch and she's stayed supportive. And it was really, I think, beyond the fact that I knew Chris and I, I knew this young lady because we were Facebook friends, and beyond that personal connection, I think the fact that it happened while I was on the road really hit me very powerfully. And so, I, you know, obviously I've stayed in touch with Chris over the past year, and we've talked about ways that we could possibly do something. Obviously, she's had to deal with they caught the guy who they believed did it, and he he was just convicted this past week. So she's been dealing with all of that over the past year, and it, probably about two or three months ago, she she texted me and said, "Okay, I'm ready to do a tour." And so it really was a kind of an invitation from her that said, "Okay, let's do something." And so I started envisioning it. And I, I thought I might be getting a little personal because what I'm doing is I'm wheeling from the town where she was murdered and I'm taking her back home. So for me, it's, there's a deep spiritual significance to it of wanting her to go back home. Both of the towns involved are in fact very small towns, so this kind of thing doesn't happen. And, uh, and yet it obviously did. And so 
there's a lot of grieving in the town, a lot of anger in the town. Even after the conviction, there's a lot of anger. And so for me, I look at it as a very healing tour, an opportunity to unite, an opportunity to say this kind of thing is not going to claim our community. There's a financial component to it. Last year, her mom started the Jessica Evans Memorial Scholarship at her high school. And it's a $500 award that recognizes a student who, much like Jessica, has kind of a zest and an enthusiasm for life and who is trying to improve the lives of others. And so my goal is to raise $5,000 to fund that scholarship for the next 10 years. What if you make more than $5,000 on the tour? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, we have identified a nonprofit organization in, I believe it's in Carmi, it's called the Guardian Center, and it works with um, survivors of abuse, and it, it does a lot of the work that I'm trying to do, so it's very similar in values. I've heard good things about it. I, I did some research, so any money that comes in above $5,000 is going to go to the Guardian Center. We're also kicking off another project that I have. If you go to onemillionacres.com, you will see that I run a website that is a what I call a living memorial to child victims of violence. And what I've gone through and I'm trying to do is to list children who have lost their lives because of violence. And, and I find articles about them and I link to them so that it becomes very real for people. And on this particular tour, for the first time, we're going to plant a memorial tree. And that has always been, for me, the next phase of One Million Acres, which is, of course, a spinoff of Winnie the Pooh, because Hundred Acre Wood is, you know, to me, the epitome of a safe childhood. And so for me, One Million Acres is about giving safety back to the community. How can we support you in this cause? Well, I mean, there are direct ways. Obviously, if you live in southern Illinois, uh, come on out. I would love to have you on the road. You can be a volunteer. Next year is my 25th anniversary, and that's going to be a big event, especially here in Indiana. I'm hoping to do some tours around the country to kind of mark it. I'm going to go to Dallas, which is where my own daughter was murdered, and so I, that'll be the first time I've gone there. Very emotional trip for me. So certainly volunteering for the Tenderness Tour. You can certainly also contribute Especially this year, I, you know, I, I don't think I've felt this strongly about fundraising in a long time. But I feel really strongly that I want to get this $5,000 goal. So you can do that at tendernesstour.com, which is my website. I also have what they call a GoFundMe site. It's, it's where individuals and organizations can raise money. It's gofundme.com backslash tendernesstour23 because I'd forgotten I was on the 24th year, so I made it a 23. I'll admit it was my own mistake. After 24 years, you know, you forget things. There are also practical needs. We're always looking for like a quality road wheelchair would be on my wish list. Practical equipment that can help us get the word out, whether it's technology. There, there are lots of ways to get involved. And I, I'm also always looking for people to join me on the road, especially those who are very comfortable with disability. So much of what you're doing seems to be getting out the message that love triumphs over evil. Mm -hmm. Is that an accurate assessment? That's a very accurate assessment. You know, a lot of people, especially those people who knew me early on in my early 20s, they know the impact that my past had on me and how I got caught in that destructive cycle, that downward cycle. I, I um, tried to kill myself multiple times. I, I had a drinking problem for years. Um, I really struggled. I got into bad relationships. I, I didn't take care of myself, and I'm still paying for that in some ways with my health. And, and yet, I pulled out of that. You know, I found really good role models. I did the first tenderness tour. Uh, I came back from that tour. I, I, I tell people, you know, when I did that first tenderness tour, I was um, I was living on disability. I was homeless. I had 
you know, lost my home for the second time. I was suicidal. I was a mess. And I really was leaving for that first tour determined that, you know, this is just going to validate my life's not worth living. And it so completely did the opposite. So for me, the tour is about saying, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at. It's never too late. You can start over. And it's not always easy to start over. It's not always easy to find hope and to find those role models and to sometimes break off relationships that need to be broken off. But it can be done. And our communities can heal. And, um, you know, I've probably become less idealistic over the years. You know, I may not necessarily believe that I'm going to end abuse or end domestic violence, but I do believe that I, we can make a difference in each other's lives. You know, our acts of kindness do matter. The way we treat people, it matters. And that's really the message of the tour. I, I think that maybe the best thing I'm giving this community is the fact that I'm willing to drive four and a half hours for a one-day event so that I can go there and do something for them. They seem to be completely blown away by this fact. I'm staying actually all weekend to do some other outreach in the community. But that's what we need to do for each other. We need to be willing to be inconvenienced. We need to do whatever it takes to find ways to love one another. And that will always, in my opinion, always be more powerful than evil. Though dark clouds may gather round me, and though my way be rough and steep, yet beauteous fields lie just before me, where God's redeemed.